Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Dustin Kreis, and today we are going to do a game discussion, and we're going to talk about a little game that I just played on my PS4 called Salt and Sanctuary. Um, it just came out maybe like a week and a half ago or something. $17 on PSN. Um, I think it's on Steam, but don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, just a little game that uh, a bunch of my friends were kind of hyped for. I watched a trailer for it and I thought to myself, man, this actually looks pretty interesting. And what Salt and Sanctuary is, um, very literally, just take the Souls series and sort of strip it back to a 2D side-scrolling Metroidvania game. And not only do you have an idea of what the game is, but you know exactly what the game is. Um, it's amazing how much the Souls formula kind of... Uh, it doesn't lose anything uh, in the transition to 2D. And in fact, the game maybe gets a little bit more challenging just because you're removing that third dimension of um, dodging or strafing or, you know, whatever it is to get out of the way of the enemy's attacks. Um, I had a really, really good time with this game. Um, it's kind of some of the same frustrations I have with the Soul series. Um, but, uh, it, it's got me back into the mindset and back to being ready, uh, for Dark Souls 3, which comes out in about a week. And, um, if you're a fan of the Souls series and you haven't checked out Salt and Sanctuary yet, you really owe it to yourself, uh, to give this game a shot because, uh, it is straight up just the Souls series in a 2D, uh, platform. So much so that even like when you look at your inventory and your character's HP and stamina bar and just the way you have to approach the enemies and stuff, I mean, you might as well be playing a Souls game. And it's pretty crazy um, that this game is even out because it is such a, um, it's an homage, but it's almost kind of a, it's kind of almost just stealing that, uh, the Souls series mechanics and putting it into this game. It's amazing that no one has gotten sued yet over Salt and Sanctuary. Uh, but maybe, you know, From Software is taking it the correct way and seeing it as an homage, and uh, they'll let this guy, uh, this team, have their game uh, out there for you guys to play. Um, since it's a lot like the Soul series, uh, talking about the narrative, talking about the story of the game, is a bit difficult because like the Souls games, it drops you into this world and kind of gives you hints as to what happened. And it's up to you to kind of piece it all together between these little snippets of conversations with the characters and uh, item descriptions and just the, the overall feeling and the, the, the visuals you see in the world itself to kind of piece together what has happened uh, in this game. So... Uh, talking about the storyline is a bit difficult because, you know, things are sort of just, just strands of ideas that you have to kind of read between the lines and understand. But, uh, comparing it to, say, like Dark Souls or Bloodborne or something like that, uh, very much in the same vein, um, very similar feeling, uh, that the atmosphere of the story and the sort of, um, everyone's, you know sort of a sad sack, I guess. Um, but, uh, you know, they're all, all these people are stuck on this island together and trying to piece together what's happened to themselves and what's happened to the island. And uh, it's an interesting thing to see. Um, I haven't looked up, like, a wiki to see um, sort of how all the pieces fit together quite yet. I might play through it again as a different build. But I always say that, and then I never go back to these games and do it. But... Um, I would like to see kind of how everything pieces together. Uh, one of the big things, you know, if you're used to uh, Bloodborne, or not Bloodborne, uh, the Dark Souls series, and like the bonfires and uh, rekindling the flames and things like that, uh, this game has sanctuaries. And um, they function the same way as a bonfire. It's where you do your leveling. It's where you can acquire new skills. Um, you get these uh, little stone items that you can use at the sanctuary, make an offering to the god, whatever god you choose, and uh, you can put like a blacksmith in the sanctuary or a uh, alchemist to like uh, upgrade your weapons. Well, let me, let me put it this way. Uh, blacksmiths upgrade your equipment and your weapons, but alchemists will transmute your swords into different things. So, you know, 
for a long time I was holding on to these idols and I didn't know what to do with them. And finally I just used one and then a blacksmith showed up and I was like, aha, aha, now I know what to do. So um, there's also these ones that are called guides and they're very important and very plentiful. And that's kind of how you do your fast travel between uh, the different areas in the game because it's, it's kind of crazy. You take a, a game like Dark Souls and you put it into a 2D form and the 2D aspect makes navigating a lot harder for some reason. Like I, I was just getting lost um, left and right in this game. Couldn't remember how to get back to certain areas. Um, I didn't use the guides right off the bat, so I didn't have my fast travel. But once I started using the guides and having fast travel, I didn't have any trouble getting around. But it, it's, it's amazing how hard it is to remember uh, where to go. But much like the Souls series, um, you basically work your way from sanctuary to sanctuary in these very strenuous uh, areas f filled with harrowing battles um, in a quest for this game's equivalent to Souls, which is salt. And much like uh, the Souls series, whenever you beat an enemy, you acquire salt. Um, if the enemy beats you, they steal your salt and you have a chance to go back and get it back. Uh, but if you die again, you lose it all. The main difference is um, whenever you're revived, uh, this game also has gold. And you can use gold to buy items. And um, I think it's just I think it's just buying items. Uh, but the other use for gold is to resurrect yourself. And every time you're resurrected, uh, this monk takes 10% of your gold, which, you know, it always felt like, oh crap, I died, I'm going to lose a bunch of gold. But I never dropped an insane amount of gold. Like, I never got down below, like, once I got above, like, the, the 10k mark in gold, I never really dropped below that. So, um, I, I guess if you get stuck in a really bad area, um... I don't know what happens if you have no gold and you die. If you just game over, I don't. I don't know. I never got to that point, but it'd be an interesting thing to see. But you know, they resurrect you and uh, you try, try again, and it's a lot of trial and error. But uh, the gameplay mechanics actually work really well with the the sort of the tropes of Metroid or Castlevania, uh, specifically uh, Symphony of the Night, where you get a bunch of different abilities. And then you have to go back to the old areas and re-explore them and use your new abilities to find new areas and new loot, new treasure. And there's a ton of weapons and armor. And much like the Soul series, I, I kind of stick to um, some, some of the stuff you get at the beginning of the game. I never really, for some reason, the Soul series, I never really got into like trying to buff up swords and things like that. Like I would, I would improve them, but I would never like transmute them. Like I'd see like Joe run around with like insane equipment and I'm like, Oh, I wonder how you get that. And then it's like, I look it up and like the way of getting it is just, uh, I don't want to waste my time with it. And I'm doing okay with the weapons that I have. So I just keep, uh, you know, plucking away at it. But uh, I did do some transmuting of weapons uh, in salt and sanctuary and man, it makes the game so much easier. Like I started off as a sword and shield build and I was having just a, an insane time with one of these bosses. And then I decided to go back and uh, get a great sword and then upgrade the great sword. And I used the initial great sword through most of the game. It wasn't until I got to the later stages where I got the items that I could actually transmute it into strong, a stronger great sword. But by the end of the game, I mean, I was just dominating some of these bosses. Um, yeah, like a, a few sword swipes, because uh, I'd get about six sword swipes to my stamina bar, and then the stamina bar would you know refill pretty quickly because of the items I had equipped, and then I would roll out of the way of their attack. But after those six uh, you know swipes with this powered up sword, I mean I was taking off like a quarter of the boss's health, and you know you also it's like the you have this thing like the Estus flask where you can increase the number of uses. So I had like nine uses of my potion. And I mean, even if I'd get like knocked down to almost no health, as long as I could get up and hit the R1 button to take a drink of my potion, I was like, it didn't really matter. So if you do your leveling and your upgrading and things like that, the game actually is pretty battle wise, pretty easy. Um, there are some harrowing uh, platforming aspects to it. Um, 
like uh, platforms that will disappear and reappear underneath of you, uh, you know, all of the blocks and Mega Man. Um, those kind of tripped me up a little bit that here and there because I'm not the the best at platforming games. Hence why I very rarely play Mega Man One <laughs> because that Guts Man stage. Um, I don't think there's anything that makes me just lose my shit more than that opening part of Guts Man stage. Um, that's some hardcore shit right there. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, you just kind of move through area area like you do in the, the Soul series. And uh, some of the places are really neat. Um, you know, you, a lot of places are, are underground, though. And uh, you have to use your torch to kind of light the way. So a lot of the detail, because a lot of the backgrounds in this game has just an amazing amount of detail. But a lot of that gets lost in how dark parts of the game actually are. And even with a torch lit, it's kind of hard to see uh, everything that's in the background. But um, very, very awesome level design. You can definitely see uh, that the, the makers of the game was a huge fan of Dark Souls. Um, the first game specifically, because I feel like... Uh, and a lot of people have said this too, and I kind of agree with what people say, that the first game had a lot better, I guess, design in the terms of the secrets and how things interconnect, where, you know, it felt like Dark Souls 1 was kind of built on top of each other, and Bloodborne was that way too, and then Dark Souls 2 was more spread out, I guess. Um, so that verticality um, is alive and well in uh, Salt and Sanctuary, and uh, if, yeah, if you really like the Soul series, you're really going to love this. Um, Audio-wise, the music is very minimal, very atmospheric, very fitting. Um, boss battles, you know, things kind of ramp up a little bit as you fight these bosses. But for the most part, um, I keep going back to saying if you like Souls, you're going to like this. Because, I mean, it, it really is kind of, I don't want to say aping and I don't want to say copying, but it's such a close homage that uh, it might as well be an unofficial part of the, the Souls series. Um, so, in terms of its music, very haunting, very atmospheric, very somber. Um, boss battles kind of ramp things up a little bit to get you, you know, into the battle. But uh, very fitting uh, for this type of game. Graphically, I think this game looks gorgeous. And um, it's, it's funny how... You know, we're in the era of the PlayStation 4 where it's able to do these amazing, amazing graphics. Um, and some of the games that I get the most excited for are these old, you know, pixelated uh, throwback games. And it's amazing how good uh, these sprite games are and uh, how detailed the animation is. Um, with these enemies because a lot like the soul series you have to watch like how a, uh, an enemy winds up to know what kind of attack is coming so you can get around it and the amount of animation that are in these sprites is just kind of mind-blowing and um really really good stuff especially when you consider that this is an indie game this is a small studio doing this game and you know i just got off what was once a big uh, triple-A tentpole title and you know while that game didn't really uh, impress me all that much uh, you know it had a big budget a big team behind it you know the mighty Capcom putting out Resident Evil 5 you know it, it should have been you know a big production uh, but this little thing impressed me more these this little team of people you know, doing a passion project, I guess it, it just kind of reads through in a way that it doesn't from these big corporate movies. It's kind of like the um, the Marvel movies, you know, like these big, huge spectacle movies, right? It has a huge budget and then something comes along like Fury Road. And I know the budget for Fury Road was still like a hundred million dollars, but there's something about the Fury Road movie that feels more intimate, more handmade than these big corporate Marvel movies. And it was kind of very refreshing to see, you know, Fury Road, um, because it felt like a movie from the eighties. Whereas, you know, these, a lot of these games nowadays are big and flashy and beautiful. Um, but they're missing some of the heart. And I feel like Salt and Sanctuary, you really felt the, uh, the makers of the game's passion for the Souls series. 
uh, come through this game. And, and, you know, standing on its own, it is actually a very fun game. And uh, it'll, but it'll drive you insane. It'll infuriate you in a couple places. And um, much like the Soul series, you know, I, I would get very angry at it and I would set my controller down and not play it for like a day and a half and then go back to it and just burn through like three places and be like, I don't know, it was so hard about that. Then I'd hit a wall again and I get infuriated and I'd put the controller down and walk away from it, come back and then blast through it like it was nothing. So it's a nice little, um, it's a nice little appetizer for Dark Souls 3 because we still have a week to go before, maybe not a week, maybe it comes out, it's the 12th. I might be, I think that's next week. My math is, <laughs> today's, yes, it's next week. <laughs> oh man, it's a day off and I've had a, a hell of a week at work. So uh, my brain's not really functioning very well. And plus I've been doing almost nothing but watching Star Wars since it came out on Blu-ray yesterday. But anyway, we're not talking about those things. We're talking about Salt and Sanctuary. Um, like I said, like 17 bucks on PSN. And um, if you're if you're jonesing for uh, the you know a soul's itch, you've got a soul's itch and you need to scratch it, but you want something new, you don't want to go back and replay the game, uh, pick up Salt and Sanctuary and give it a shot because I think you'll be very pleasantly surprised with it. Um, which I was. I was very, very impressed with it. Um, I kind of want them to do another one, but then again, it's like, well, Dark Souls 3 is coming out, so, you know. You know, I don't know. I don't. I feel like this genre of game is going to be around for a while. This this Souls esque game because there's also um, a game called Lords of the Fallen, which I guess is kind of Souls esque. And then there was another game that they were that someone was coming out with that was kind of a takeoff of the Souls series. But um, you know, it's it's proven its um, you know financial clout. So there's going to be a bunch of copies of the game, and you know, as a copy of the game, sort of in a different you know mindset salt and sanctuary does it very well and i think you'll be very impressed with it so um i i thoroughly enjoyed my time with it um i actually kind of want to go back and play it again but like i said souls 3 is coming out here soon so might as well just wait for that but um anyway guys that is it for this video i want to thank you guys so much for watching take care and i'll see you next time